the best way to get better at programming is to practice. In this example, we're going to extend an existing class and create a new class. The extension of the existing class means that the existing class can do a lot of the basically heavy lifting for us. The work that's repetitive that needs to be done and is already done. As always, the files needed for this example are available for download using the link below. We'll give you just a couple seconds so you can download them and then we'll go ahead and get started. All right, so let's get going. So I have an existing shape class and just to remind you what it looks like, we have some basic properties and some basic methods. Then we have the shape.cpp file, which is the instantiation of all those methods. What we need to do is create a new class that extends shape. Now, I'm going to use the built-in tools to Visual Studio. If you're using a different editor, yours might be slightly different. The file that it creates should be the same regardless of the editor that you're using, however. So in Visual Studio, I'm going to right-click on my project, choose Add, and choose class. My class name is going to be square. Notice once again, class names always start with a capital letter. And then I have a base class of shape. Notice that this is going to create my square.h and my square.cpp file. Notice I have class square colon. This lets me know it's going to extend something. What is it extending? It's extending the shape class. Also notice that we have to include shape.h into this. We have our body, which is our braces. Inside of our body, we're going to find our new private properties as well as any methods that we'll need. So we're going to find the private properties first. The only thing that we're going to need here is a double, which is for the size of my square. This is the only new property we have. All the existing properties from shape will be automatically imported because we're extending the shape class. Now we need methods to work with the size. These are going to be public. So we need our getter and setter for size. So we'll do double get size, and then we'll do a void set size. That's going to take a double. We're also going to need a get area because this is something that would be relevant to a square or another type of shape that hasn't already been defined by the generic shape because we don't know what type of shape it is or how to calculate it. So I'm going to say double get area. We could also have things like get parameter and, and other values as well, but we're just going to work on just these three for right now. So while this works really well for allow us to have a getter and setter for size and a method that is directly related to size, there's a few things that we are missing. Namely, how do we handle constructors? because a square is going to have a different set of constructors. For example, I don't need to pass in what type of shape it is because I know it's already a square. So let's go up here and define some constructors that we will need. And this would be things like a default constructor. We're also going to have a constructor where we specify square and we pass in one double, which would probably be the size. And then finally, a constructor where we pass in three doubles for our size and our x and y coordinate. That should be all that we need. We're going to save this and then we're going to go into our square.cpp so that we can build these out. So now we're inside our square.cpp file and we need to build those methods that we just saw. So I'm going to start off with my constructor. Remember, I have to specify square, colon, colon, or whatever that class name is before any method, including constructors. And I'm going to showcase the default constructor. Now, if I do something like this, I want to say something like this arrow type, but notice I can only get the type. I don't have a set type method because it's not something that would typically change. And type, just like X and Y, are private properties. Therefore, there's nothing I can really do with them. So the solution is up on my first line after my parameter list, which is empty because it's a default constructor, and say colon shape, and then I'm going to pass in square. So what this does is it says, hey, go to my shape class. I'm going to pass in the string so as I know what type it is. 
We'll let the rest of that constructor do its thing, and then I'm going to run me. And so what's going to be happening inside of square? Well, I need to set the size. So I'm going to say this arrow size is going to equal one. Next, I'm going to do square. And this one's going to take the double. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. Shape square do my body and now I'm going to say this size equals size finally I'm going to have my square where I pass in three doubles so say double size double x and double y in this case I have x and y that I'm being passed into so I can say colon, shape, square, comma, x, comma, y. And then I'll just do this arrow, size equals size. This way I'm using those methods that were created for me in shape. I don't have to rewrite them and I can use those private properties and let it be handled. Next, I'm going to need my getter and my setter for size. So I'm going to say void square set size double size. Now, what's nice about having getters and setters is I can put some protections into this. So not only do I have things like, do I have the ability to access this? Like, for example, I can't change the type of a shape, so I don't have a setter. But I can also make sure that things like size make logical sense. I don't want a negative size, for example. So I can come in here and say, if size is greater than zero, okay, because the size of my box can't be zero, can't be a negative number. So if it is, I can say this size equals size. Now, most of the time, hopefully we're going to get legitimate values, but every once in a while we may not, and this is going to protect us. Now, is it going to protect us if someone meant to enter in 12 and they put in 123? No. It doesn't know what the right answer is. It just knows what type of answer it's looking for. My next thing is to get the size. I'm going to say double square get size return this size and then finally we need the area so i'm going to say double square get area now notice i do not have a property called area therefore i'm going to calculate this the area of a square is simply size times size i can either use the pal function or i can simply say this size times this size and I'm just going to do is return pal this size comma two. Notice I'm not putting this into a new variable. I don't have to. I can simply say return and then do my calculation. Makes it a little faster and easier. I'm going to save this. Do a quick build of my solution just to make sure there's no errors. And there's none, so that's good. Come back to my main file where I have my main. And I'm going to say... Shape, shape one, and we'll leave it as that. That's a default constructor. If I try say square right now, you're going to notice that it doesn't know what it is and it actually gives me an error. The reason why is we haven't included square.h. So I come up here, pound, include square.h. And now if I come down here and say square sq1, it'll do something for me. I can say square as q2 and this time i'm going to pass in a value and then i'm going to say square sq3 and give it three values 4.5 7.6 5.5 so just a couple of values right here and then i can see out what they're going to look like just so i kind of get a better idea so i'm going to say see out shape one dot get type and del 
So I have here square one. I'm going to do sq1 dot. Notice I have get type. Now we didn't create a get type method, but it was part of shape. And so it automatically came over as part of shape. Okay, so, so we get to use any public properties and public methods. Is at. Same thing with get x. And get y. Get size is new. Okay. I'm going to copy that and then change this to square two. So all places I have SQ1, I'm going to have SQ2. And then I'm going to change that to square three. This way we get to see how it's going to change and affect things. So now we'll come up here and run this. Notice that by default, your position is at zero, zero, which is what it shows. And by default, the size is one, which means it has an area of one. We then see what happens when we pass in one parameter. And then we see what happens when we pass in three parameters. So all this information is correct. And that's very good for us. That's exactly what we're looking for. So very simple way that we can extend this. Now, now what would we do if we want to add a circle or a rectangle or triangle? Almost the exact same thing. We would extend the existing shape. We would add the new properties that we need. Things like a triangle would need a base and a height, whereas things like a rectangle would need a height and a length instead of just a single size. Circle would also need a single size. You might call it radius. And you can kind of work from there to determine how would you do those mathematical calculations? Is there any additions or subtractions from that given shape class? Then you can check and say, hey, is there anything else I need to do in comparison to the square? And the answer might be yes, it might be no. It just depends upon what shapes you're looking at. But it's a very simple process for you to use. So you can use that to build out any shape that you want just by simply extending shape. It also becomes simple to add additional functionality to all of your shapes. So for example, what happens if you want to add color? That's easy. You add it to shape and then everything that extends shape gets the color. Hopefully this example was helpful to you. If so, please give the video a like and consider looking at the rest of the series to learn how to get better at programming C and C++.